Hello again, it's me Zubia Mugel and I am your teacher for this course HTML2 CSS Fundamentals and as promised in the last course when we concluded the last course I promised that this HTML part 1 is going to continue into more advanced concepts in this course and we're going to be covering CSS in this course completely this course is all about CSS this part of the HTML course is all about CSS and this course is for absolute beginners and anybody who is interested in styling their HTML web pages they are very welcome in this course or if you're trying to get a refresher on CSS you're welcome in this course okay if I look at the course objectives Basically, this is a high-level course designed to give you the concepts of CSS and programming for the web. It is for the absolute beginner. You will need your notepad program to write down code and run it on your browser. Okay, before I begin the lecture, uh, let me ask this basic question. What is CSS? Okay, CSS stands for, let me just write it down while I'm talking. CSS stands for Cascading Style sheets okay cascading style sheets and as we know if you look at look up the word cascade on any in any dictionary google it cascade cascades means you know it uh, one thing follows another okay it's like a series so cascading style sheets means you know you're creating a style in series it's it's basically you know I'm just trying to explain the literal meaning of cascading even though I feel sometimes cascading the word cascading has does not have much to do with the programming that we're about to do in the CSS it is let me warn you a little bit similar to HTML but the syntax is there are a few differences but if you are well versed with the HTML syntax this is going to be very easy to catch on Okay, so CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. CSS is a standard language for defining styles on web page. Okay, notice that we stress on the word style here. Style. This is all about styling the web page. Okay, so when you talk about Cascading Style Sheets, it means that, you know, you are trying to embellish something that was plain and boring. Something that was, you know, not very, something that was lackluster, something that was not very attractive, and something that was pretty much, you know, old-fashioned or very plain. And not too interesting to look at, you try to style it up. Basically, that's what this language is going to do. It's like the cosmetics of the web page, websites. It's like, you know, making things look much prettier, more professional, more, you know, uh, robust, more hip and more trendy so that's where the cascading style sheet code comes in okay so although css is more widely known for its application in the html documents it can also be used for defining styles for any structured document format for example xml many other languages are also using css so uh, syntax okay but for the scope of this course i'm going to focus on html uh, css enhancing the HTML language okay just hang in there for a bit I will explain exactly what the difference between HTML and CSS is please do not worry just relax and enjoy this video I'm gonna do this step by step very easily so that your concepts are solid and then we will move on into writing the code okay so CSS has a very interesting history okay before I get into the CSS, let me talk about the word style. I was talking with the word style here. Styles are set using CSS properties. Okay. We will be talking about CSS styles, which are set by using setting up properties. Okay. And for example, you can set font properties. For example, if you have font, you can set it up as the properties that you can set up is size, colors, style, etc. These are all the properties. So the font can be determined by the following properties. Size, color, style, etc. Okay? Simple? 
all right so these are the properties and this is how th these these are the properties that we enhance in the css language background images border styles and much much more so we're going to be working about okay anything that you covered in html1 we will be doing it again in css but with slightly different code okay slightly different syntax and let me tell you one thing never underestimate the power of css css has the capability you write a little bit of code and you can easily just write a little bit of code and you can easily make a dramatic impact on your web page i will show you how this is actually very interesting even more interesting than html1 uh, the reason why it's more interesting is because it has a direct application in your real life if you look around you any website any web page that you pick up you will see that there is styling involved there is plenty tons of styling involved so this is a good thing this is a good skill to have Supposing you're trying to work on a web page that already has CSS code and CSS syntax. In order to understand or manipulate that web page, you need to understand how the CSS syntax works, what things or what, what part of the code means what and how it impacts your web page. So once you have that basic understanding, you can enhance the website or modify the website further. All right. CSS has gone through some major changes since CSS level 1 became the W3C recommendation. Okay, so the world uh, W3C is a, is a consortium for the websites and what it does is it declares the standards for writing code for the web pages. So CSS is, is a standard. And all all browsers understand the standard. Any any browser you have, regardless of the browser, CSS can be read, read by any kind of browser. All right. That being said, okay. I also wanted to explain the difference between HTML and CSS. Let's go on to the next slide. All right. CSS or cascading style sheet is a style sheet language. Okay, developed to control the presentation of mock-up language documents like HTML. You can think of HTML as controlling the structure of the web while CSS controls the presentation of it. All right, the best way I can think of to display uh, visually thinking of HTML as the structure of a new building. For example, you can see the structure as it's being built, but you don't really know what the building is going to look like. Okay, this is the basic structure of house. It has all of these frames and all of these, you know, the lumber and the wood and everything, helping the structure stand well uh, without collapsing. You know, it should be able to, it should be sturdy enough to stand up straight. So, but you don't know what the actual building is going to look like. Okay, CSS. So that's that's the HTML. HTML is like your main structure of your web page it defines that the page has headings the page has lists the page has a border the page has a color it has a background all of these things are defined by the html syntax okay but we don't know what it's going to look like okay um i have done this example for you let me show you for example let me just drag this here okay just in order to explain to you the difference between an html page and a base check this out this is a basic html page okay and check out the heading and check out the uh, paragraph font as well this is a basic web page but if you take a look at the css example notice how embellished and fancy it's looking now but it says the same thing html page this is a basic web page but you have an underline here you have a border you have a square you have a different shade you're using different color you have a, you know location specific background there are a lot of things happening here there's a style happening happening here this is like the plain building right here that i was trying to explain let me drag this down a little bit this is like the plain building here okay and this is the completed building. So CSS is like, you know, something that helps you understand the outcome or the 
final product, the end product, what is it going to look like? Okay, so CSS on the other hand serves as the skin of the building and determines what the outside of the building is going to look like. Okay, by separating the structure and presentation in this way. So this is the structure and this is the presentation. Okay, you can change how things look by simply changing the CSS files or without changing the underlying structure. Which means that, my dear students, if you need to change the style of the CSS, you need to change the style of the page, you don't have to disturb the structure. Okay, for example, within the same structure, you can have a building that is not blue in color, but, you know, maybe green in color, with a roof not gray in color, but a brown, brown roof. And then, you know, you can have a wider door and more, more windows here. And, and just the list goes on and on. With the same, same structure, you can have a building that looks differently. So the structure and presentation are two different things. If you want to change the presentation, you don't have to disturb the structure. That's all I'm trying to say here. Okay? Okay? So we have, in terms of syntax, CSS is not a markup language like HTML or even a scripting language like JavaScript. It's just a style sheet language. You need to understand that. Uh, CSS is not a hypertext markup language like HTML. It is a styling language, style sheet language. Okay, this means that CSS consists of a collection of formatting rules which identify the elements in the document that should control and that they should control and the properties that, that they wish to set. Okay, for example, the element of font, the element of background, the element of color, the element of table, all of these are enhanced using style sheet language. Okay, styles are applied in, in the order that they are found and since styles can be placed in several different locations, this often results in a cascade of styles. From external documents all the way down to locally placed styles. For example, my dear students, you have, you have an HTML document with CSS style sheet coding located within it, you could have, you could call files from external locations, external servers within your, you know, local file and have the style of that external program implement in your local file. Okay, this sounds a little bit complex, but to be very honest, CSS makes things very easy. It makes programming very easy for us. Okay, and that's exactly what we're going to learn in this course. How we can call uh, programs ex from external sources and have them implement without writing much code. We can have big dramatic impact on our local files. That's exactly what I'm going to explain here. One of the major benefits of CSS is that it allows us to enable highly modularized web design. Okay. It helps us to modularize the web design, which means you one set of code, you know, if you have a set of code, you don't have to write the same code for every single element in your web page or same element in the entire web page. You don't have to write the code again and again. You just declare the code once, perhaps at the top of the document, and then it is, you just need to call that code to the various locations where it's needed. And my dear friends, this is the concept of object-oriented programming. We'll talk more about that later. I'm just giving you a brief overview of what this course is all about. So this means that CSS consists of collection of formatting rules which identify the elements in the document and they should control the properties. All right. CSS controls the documents, what the documents look like. Okay. And but the other languages like JavaScript, it controls the behavior within the client or the browser. Okay, server-side languages such as PHP control processing and business logic and databases such as MySQL store content. What I'm trying to explain here is, my students, you have when you whenever you have a website, you have the front end of the website and then you have a back end of the website. 
In the front end of the website, you have the HTML, the markup language, and the style sheet language, that is the CSS, which determines what the user is going to experience when they look at your front end of your website. The back end of the website it is more complex and it's more intricate. It consists of scripting languages, it consists of database management, it consists of uh, content management languages, and so on. So I'm just trying to explain you the role of Stylesheet in the entire web page, in the entire web browsing experience. The role is just to present a web page in an attractive or favorable or preferred manner. That's it. That's about it. Okay. All right, what else can I cover here? Yes, here's the difference between CSS and HTML. Okay, the HTML, if you look at HTML, the purpose of HTML is to provide document structure and meaning. This is particularly true with the introduction of HTML5, for example, that is the programming for the mobile apps. Okay, but on the other hand, CSS, you use CSS to specify how those HTML elements look like. Okay, but not just how they look, how they are presented. After all, you can use CSS to provide styles for speech output. Okay, and you can also provide CSS to define, to specify how, any within a given context, how your CSS will be, the code will be, implemented how the page will be presented in different contexts all right if you look at the examples here as i just explained this this is the example one and this is the example two all right i'm going to explain what the code looks like in a bit but before i do that I would, ex I would just want to make sure that I discuss with you the, what do we call, the course syllabus. Okay. Within this course, now that I've given you a brief, you know, a, a, a pretty much, you know, a comprehensive overview of what we're going to do in this course, let's talk about the main, main elements or the main topics to be covered in the course. We're going to do an introduction, which we're doing right now, and then in the next chapter, we're going to start begin writing on the code, CSS syntax. We're going to do CSS class, font, text, background, border, height, width, margin, padding, list, float, layers, and CSS code. When when I come to this point here, CSS code, we're going to do we, we're going to be covering a lot of programming, a lot of uh, bits of code. We're going to write down. We're going to run them. We're going to test them. We're going to uh, troubleshoot them. We're going to fix errors. We're going to rewrite code, and we're going to run it again until we are satisfied. So let's roll the sleeves up and let's get to work. Up next is CSS syntax. Stay tuned and good luck and have a nice time. Take care.